Hello everybody! In this video I'm gonna tell you about the hub. We spent in the hub almost two months and would stay longer because we loved it here. Unfortunately we had things to do, so we left. But we would come back again for sure. In this video I'm gonna tell you all I know about the place. How to get here, how and where to find accommodation, everything about childcare and how it is here with internet and places to work at. In the follow-up video I'm gonna tell you about places to eat in the hub and about entertainment. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, let's start with our experience. We arrived to Sharman Sheikh from London. It was a direct flight and took five hours to get here. We received visas on arrival, which costed $25 each. We booked a transfer beforehand and it costed $30. The road to the hub takes one hour or one hour and a half, depending on the road. And there are many stopping points. Uh, that's the main reason why it may take longer as Egypt has lots of security blog posts. We booked three nights in a hotel in the central area to have enough time to find an appropriate house for our stay. I advise to do so if you come here for the first time, because if you come for more than a week, it really matters where you stay and it's better to check it out yourself rather than be delusioned by beautifully created photos and then find out that it looks a bit different. To search for accommodation there are various telegram chats and Facebook groups where local realtors publish offers every day. Price range from $200 to $1,200. I think it's sensible to pay not more than five or $600 uh, for a one or two bedroom place because the hub shouldn't be more expensive. Everything that's more expensive is only worth it if you stay with a big family of friends or want European conditions, although there is no guarantee that you'll get it even for this money. On the third day of running around the hub, I found a decent apartment in Mashraba. It was located in a relatively new house and in a quiet area. The big bonus for us was that the kindergarten was located just 10 minutes walk from here and it was only 15 minutes to the lighthouse area, in the very center of the hub. The house is called Classic for some reason and you can find it on Google Maps under this name. I'm gonna tell you about different areas in the hub in a minute. Meanwhile, have a look at our accommodation. It's a one-bedroom flat with conditioners, with uh, everything that we need basically. It wasn't super convenient because the kitchen was too small and we only have a small cooker. But uh, it simplified our menus and we were out in the cafes quite often as well. Design is a bit weird as you may see, there are many empty bottles from whiskey and well, we didn't pay attention to it too much. The bathroom was okay, although uh, the toilet was leaking a bit. And this is our bedroom. We didn't have a double bed and just two single beds, but we got used to it. I mean, it wasn't a big issue for us. There was enough space to keep our clothes and uh, toiletries and everything.
Another drawback, there was no proper desk for writing or uh, working at computer, but uh, it was okay because we went to work in cafe anyway. Unprecedented details of Egyptian design. But to be honest, I quite liked it. Uh, it was a bit eclectic, but uh, it felt cozy in that apartment. As you may see, I stand on my tiptoes because the cooker was a bit too high. I'm making coconut pancakes. We found a place to buy good cottage cheese and uh, got some coconut flour and made some pancakes was just once. It's also illegal to share an apartment or hotel room with an Egyptian of the opposite sex if you're not married. Coconut flour pancakes with yogurt and mango. Mm. All the areas in the hub are connected by a long seaside walk promenade. It's called Masbat, and you can literally walk here for hours, especially if you're with a little kid. It's always uh, pretty busy in the lighthouse area and not so much in Asala Il Garden or Mashaba areas. Every evening we took a long walk here and never got bored of it. Naomi became a little superstar here. Everybody wanted to take a photo with her, both men and women, and they kissed her hands and said hi and just wanted to spend time with her. It was fun for all of us. Arabs love kids very much. We literally spent every evening walking here and never got enough of it because it's a bustling atmosphere and there are always some people and something to watch and something to enjoy, somebody to talk to. We loved it. And Naomi as well, especially. With all this attention. Let me tell you a bit about different areas in the hub and uh, where to live. Asala or the old town is 15 minutes walk from the lighthouse, the center, and it's densely populated by locals. Long stairs rent out inexpensive houses here quite often. It's very authentic, with its bonuses and minuses. Bonus is cheap market and various shops are located here, so you don't have to go too far away to buy fruit and vegetables.
It was a season for strawberries and they were nice. Minus, it can be too noisy and more dusty than in other areas. The most well-known kindergarten Habimba is located here, but it wasn't for us because it's only for kids starting three years old. This is a typical Egyptian bakery when you can buy everything from bread buns and pastry to cakes and biscuits. Another residential area between Asala and Lighthouse is called Il Garden. There are many graffitis on the walls, not only here, but here uh, quite a lot. And there are many medium-priced hotels and nice restaurants and coffee shops. Lighthouse is the very center of the hub. It's here that the most known windy beach is located and I love to swim here. It's always pretty busy but in a good way. I mean you can see lots of people but it's not annoying, at least in winter. Bedouin tea is something special which you can only find in Sinai Peninsula. Maybe in other parts of Egypt as well, but I'm not sure. A mix of herbs uh, that grow in the desert and it's very nice and aromatic. As I said before, we lived in Mashraba area, this is how it looks and uh, it's pretty chilled out and there are lots of residential houses and small hotels. visiting Sphinx Kids Club, uh, which is one of three kindergartens in the hub. Two others are Habiba and Umka. And Habiba is located in Asala, between Asala and Ilgarn, and Umka, I believe, also closer to Asala. I never saw it. But this one was the closest to our place, and Naomi loved it. The obvious bonus of the Sphinx kindergarten here is that you can pay by hour, not by day or half day, as in two other places. Also, it accepts kids of any age, starting from one, I guess. This is how the seafront looks on the Mashraba side. It's pretty empty all the time. There are occasional tourists and groups of people, but as much as in the lighthouse area and one of our favorite things to do was to check out the inhabitants of the sea when the tide was out hermit crab Oh, yeah, look. 
you can never get bored next to the sea. It's always changing, sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's calm like this. And by the way, these mountains on the other side is Saudi Arabia. Right after Mashaba there is the lagoon area. It is the accumulation of new expensive hotels with the world names like Meridian, Swiss Inn, Ibis. Actually we never got there so I only heard that there are such hotels. On the way to lagoon there are a few kilometers of the abandoned hotels that started being built um, probably before Covid and then got just left. I don't know why exactly. It looks a bit weird. Looks like uh, the Habians wanted to expand their business a lot, but then Covid and some other reasons stopped these plans. Lagoon is very beautiful and it's got sandy beach which, which is convenient with kids, but it's very windy, at least in winter. And there are kite surfer spots and you may see them almost every day there. This is so-called magic lake on the way to lagoon and the color of this water is very intense and it really looks like this in life. There are a few Bedouin tents uh, in Lagoon area, there are some grandmas selling stuff and people hanging around, not too many people. It's probably less windy here uh, in May or April when the high season is there, but when we were there in January and February it was very very windy. Although when you go into the water it's pretty warm. The water is usually 21-22 degrees in winter here. So for me it was okay to swim. Before coming to the hub I heard that it's constantly very windy here and it put me off a bit because I thought it's not comfortable and it's gonna be annoying but to be honest not every day was windy and also it was not too bad. I was told that near this place, which is on the middle way to Lagoon, is the best diving spot. And you can even see big turtles when you dive here. We never tried because we didn't have a chance. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> With a kid it's always like this. Oh, by the way, here she fell asleep on the way back. So to sum it up about the accommodation, I would choose Mashraba again if I come to the hub again, and I hope I will. It's cleaner, more quiet than Asala and very close to the kindergarten which we prefer. In the app 
upcoming video I will tell you about restaurants and entertainment in the hub. So don't miss it out. Subscribe to my channel, press like and put the bell on not to miss the further videos. Thank you. See you soon.